This is Colleen from Keeping the Peace, Defensive Handgun Training for Women. And today I'd like to start a discussion about lasers on self-defense handguns. This, this video is going to be directed toward my students and other people out there who might be in the process of trying to choose their first self-defense handgun for concealed carry. And there's a lot of marketing going into convincing people that their first gun should have some type of laser system on it and they're trying to convince people that it makes the shooting process foolproof. So what I want to have people think about is, does a laser on your handgun make it such that you do not have to have any training to defend yourself with that handgun? Another thing is, is the laser always going to work? Is it guaranteed that the laser is going to work? Also, there's a lot of people out there saying things like, well, the intimidation factor of a red dot being on your threat is huge. Um, and it could just make a threat go away, just them seeing a red dot on themselves. Um, so those are the kind of things that I want to toss around in the mind today. And I want to kind of just lay out some cons that come to my mind about lasers. I think they can be a good tool for someone who's already a fairly proficient shooter, but I think they can cause a false sense of security in a new shooter. And uh, I see a lot of situations where people buy their first concealed carry gun, it has a laser on it, they'll get their permit and they'll go throw it in the purse or in the bedside drawer and they'll assume as they've been told in the store where they purchased it that all they need to do is point that handgun, look at that red dot and just pull the trigger and that they're just basically guaranteed a good hit and then it's going to stop the threat. I think that gives people a false sense of security. So let's discuss a little bit. I'm really interested in hearing what other people have to say. This is not me trying to say, well, you know, this is the way it is and this is what you have to do. This is more me interested in what you think and I'm going to, of course, tell what I think, but I'm doing that because I want to start a discussion. So I'm hoping that people will make video responses and leave good comments so that we can discuss this. I'd love to see what people have to say. Something I'm very interested in also is talking with someone or watching a video of someone who has had an actual self-defense scenario happen to them where they employed a handgun with a laser. I'd love to ask some questions and see how things played out for them in real life. Okay, So here's some things that come to mind. The things that are touted in, in the um, advertising are intimidation factor. In other words, threat sees a dot, threat goes away. Okay, uh, The fact that they We'll say there's no skill required. All you got to do is point. The dot will take care of it. Just pull the trigger. Um, and then it's just basically foolproof. You don't have to have any skill whatsoever to defend yourself as long as you have a laser on your handgun. Now, I would disagree with all those things. Okay. I think you always need training, and I think you need to learn. You need to, to use the sights on your handgun because batteries can fail you. Yes, they do have a long life, but they will eventually fail. And they could fail at the time you need them the most because you're not going to probably be able to predict when they're going to quit working, especially if you're a person who's bought one of these guns and thrown it in the drawer and doesn't go shoot with it. Okay. Um, the other thing that comes to my mind is that the laser is going to really highlight how nervous and scared you are because if you're ramped up with fear and emotion when someone's attacking you, when you take that gun out of the holster or out of wherever you have it, and pointed at a threat, you're not going to have this nice steady hand. You're going to have some shaking going on. You already have a little bit of shake going on because you're breathing. You have circulation, blood circulation going through your arms. So if you add emotion and fear into that and you see this red dot, not just sitting still right where you want it, but kind of flailing all over the place, that could, I think, show your fear and possibly exacerbate the fear, making it worse. It could take away your confidence in your ability to use the weapon in your defense, I think. Um, also, if they do see the dot on them, which I don't think all criminals are going, do I have a dot? <laughs> you know, I just don't think that's realistic. But let's say they do see the dot. If they see it shaking all over the place in a pattern that's about this big, that's going to show them how nervous you are. They could use it against you, I think. Um, I do think that lasers encourage people to be ignorant of the sights. I think they become so dependent on this little apparatus 
that they fail to spend the time that's needed to learn to use the sights on their gun. And I think it's imperative that if you buy a gun, you know how to use your sights. Um, just because machinery will, you know, little lasers that depend on batteries will eventually fail. Is it possible that your gun could fail? Absolutely, which is why you carry two or fight your way to a different gun, okay? Calibration is an issue. I picked up a lot of guns right out of the box that had lasers on them and shot them, you know, before I had the students shoot them, and the lasers weren't calibrated. If you're lining up the sights on the handgun and the lasers way up here, there's going to be a problem, and I've seen that happen right out of the box. So don't assume just because you just bought a gun at a gun store, they told you, hey, all you got to do is point and shoot, that laser's going to take care of you, and never go shoot it until the situation arises where you need it for your own self-defense and you don't even realize that it's not calibrated. It could be a huge problem. I mean, it could be so bad if you mix it with nerves and zero skill, it could be so bad that you could miss your threat completely and shoot someone else. Um, and that could be bad. Some lasers have a button under the second finger on the firing hand that has to be pressed and pressure has to be maintained in a certain way to keep it activated while you're pressing the trigger, which can encourage milking milking causes shots to fall low. So in order to keep the laser activated, you're having to do something you're actually supposed to train yourself against doing. So that's another issue. These are just a couple of the things that randomly come to my mind when I think about lasers. I have to say that with my students, I kind of encourage them to not depend on lasers at all. If they have a gun that has a laser on it, I'm not gonna tell them, hey, you need to take that off or anything like that. But if they're training with me, we use sights. Um, when they're a proficient shooter and they're not having any problems, you know, running the gun and moving and all this sort of stuff, then yeah, maybe we can put the laser back in there as an added tool. But I never want from the beginning for them to start out being dependent upon a laser. So I'm curious what you have to say about it. I hope there's somebody out there that will watch this that's had a self-defense scenario that's happened to them where they've employed a handgun with a laser. I really want to pick your brain and see how things played out for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have some thoughts to share. Again, lasers on self-defense handgun. Yes or no? Have a great day. God bless. Hi, I just wanted to put a real quick segment here at the end, an outfit of the day. A lot of ladies are doing this just to give ideas of ways that you can conceal in different types of clothing. So today I've got on a simple shirt, um, camisole, and a simple skirt. I don't know if I'm back far enough that you can see that, just a simple skirt. And I'm concealing a 9mm handgun with two extra magazines and two pocket knives. So I'm doing this in a Galco under wrap, so the gun's sitting here. Draw would be just like that. I've got magazine, magazine, and then knife on the left, knife on the right. So fairly comfortable. This is just, you know, something that you could wear anywhere. Um, and uh, I feel like I'm sufficiently armed. If I had a longer skirt, I might be able to put a secondary handgun in my favorite location, which is here. Um, but today, just one. So um, if something fails, you got to fight your way to, to a different gun. But there you go. Simple outfit of the day for the summer. Thanks.